Everyone, it's Ross, and today is a day that means something important to me. Today is March 1st, and this is a day that we really need to get out here and start thinking about our figs, start thinking about the fig shuffle. For me, in particular, I have a greenhouse, and I have a heater in the greenhouse, and I can turn on that heater at night, even during the day if I wanted and that heater will wake up my trees and give them a really nice early head start. We're gonna talk all about that in just a moment and everything, every detail there is to know about that. I'm gonna bring you guys over there. First, I wanna lay the groundwork here. What is the fig shuffle? The, the fig shuffle is kind of getting a late variety of fig. There's so many varieties of figs out there. They all ripen at different times. You need to know when they ripen and whether or not they can ripen in your climate. Um, some of them require a head start, and that's kind of what the fig shuffle does. You got these really tasty varieties, but a lot of them are really late in the season. And for someone like me who lives in a short season climate, I'll never really be able to get to taste those, especially at a time of the year that isn't filled with cooler temperatures or filled with rain nonstop. So for me, I got to get them an early head start, okay? It's really important. A lot of you guys do this. You already know what I'm talking about. I'm sure a lot of you do. It's real simple. You take a fig out of your garage or your storage area. In my situation, it is the underneath the sunroom here, which kind of acts as a root cellar. Things don't get too cold, they don't get too hot. So things get really as a stable temperature down there and everything's dormant, right? We'll take the pots out of here, put them on the patio as an example, and let them get hit with those warm temperatures during the day. And if I had, you know, a good back like I do, and I was young like I am, uh, but I didn't have so many pots that I do, right? I have probably a hundred fig trees here that are in large pots. So for me, it's not really feasible to do something like that. But once the temperatures then drop down to colder temperatures, below 32 degrees, you have to really pay close attention to the weather. I would then take those pots here on the patio and bring them back into the storage area. And this would be a repeated process to give them as early of a head start that I can. And they'll, they should naturally wake up here on the patio. Uh, maybe you need to give them a little bit of a head start or a little bit of a boost somehow, I'm sorry. Your garage could come in handy because your garage probably is quite warm at this time of the year, March 1st. Things may be could be waking up there and, and the garage which we have on this side of the house we could actually just open up the garage door a lot of people do that i mean they dedicate their whole garage to these fig trees so that's the fig shuffle in a nutshell and essentially it, get, it gets you a head start which then gets you earlier figs especially on those late varieties that require more heat earlier in the season or just a longer season in general you could also use a window and put the fig tree in the window, let it wake up naturally in your house. A lot of you guys ask me about that and it's like, yeah, of course you can do that. What, well, you know, that's the whole game, right? That's the whole thing we're trying to accomplish here in my yard, that's what we do. So going over here to the greenhouse, this is, I wanna talk about the greenhouse because this is really important and the details here are always asked about and I don't know if I've ever really made them that clear but the greenhouse is gonna be opened up um, and the heater is gonna be turned on. Okay, I'm sorry. We're just gonna open up the greenhouse to turn on the heater, but we're gonna keep the door shut at all times. And this is gonna happen very soon. Um, and I want the nighttime temperatures in here to be above 60, no lower than 60. So I'll probably turn this heater on down here, probably set it to 70 maybe even 75, depending on how cold it is outside, to maintain a temperature in here at night when things are, you know, really, really cold. That's really what I wanted to say, I guess. So what we're also gonna do very soon, I know I said on the 7th, we're getting that 10 degree Fahrenheit low, right? So I'm kinda wanna wait on this. It's gonna be really difficult to maintain 60 degrees in here when it's 10 degrees outside so what i'm thinking is after that seven degree or that after march 7th i'm sorry we're going to take this tarp off because this tarp's really giving them um, really good insulation this whole 
tarp actually does wonders for keeping it much warmer in here. Um, it's about an eight degree difference, believe it or not, with just this tarp. And it's not even on correct. It could, I could slide it up towards us a little bit. Um, so we're gonna take that off after that low and then the sun is now gonna shine in. We don't really need the sun necessarily when there's no uh, leaves on these trees, but we are gonna need the sun to create some heat in here, right? Get that greenhouse effect. So we'll turn the heater on at night, keep it above 60 and it'll turn off itself during the day because the sun is then gonna take over and if this, you know, the greenhouse or the heater in here needs to kick on a little bit more, we'll do that during the day. But for the most part, this greenhouse will be kept above 60. Uh, in fact, in like sometime around May, um, early May, late April, everything is gonna come out of here because at that time of the year, especially even in parts of April, if it gets to be 60 degrees outside and the sun's shining, it could reach 100 degrees I've even seen it 120 degrees in this greenhouse. So we can't really keep the trees in here, but it's really nice to give them a nice head start. Everything will leaf out. Usually the pomegranates leaf out first, followed by the, pit, the figs. And I don't want to have them leaf out, I think, in preparation for the really cold nights that we're going to get in the next few days. So we may kick on the heater to kind of wake them up a little bit. We're going to have to kick on the heater anyway but realistically, we're gonna wait until after the 7th and really kick on this heater to keep things at night above 60. Some other things you're gonna have to worry about is when the tarp comes off, the sun shining in, a lot of that moisture is evaporating. Uh, also, the heater is really um, reducing the humidity in this greenhouse, so we need to make sure that we're watering our trees because I haven't watered these trees once this whole winter. Uh, but we also need to make sure that the heater is not really blasting some of the wood that could be desiccating as well. So protect the wood and also protect the pots, the roots. And, um, you know, that's really all there is to it. We're just going to wake these things up. We're going to get a really nice head start to the season. A lot of these figs, in fact, are actually going to get such a head start that they put out figs immediately. Um, I've seen it. If you give them enough heat in here, they kind of really trick themselves. You can trick them into fruiting very early. And I'm able to get fruit uh, of main crop by July 1st because of this heater. Turning the heater on sometime around March 1st to March 15th every year has worked out really successfully for that purpose. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this one. Um, take care, all right? I'll see you for tomorrow's video.